What's up YouTube, it's Beetle Player 1011 here, and uh, today we'll be talking about the Fresnel Integrals. So the Fresnel Integrals are two integrals that can't be solved in terms of elementary functions. Uh, and to quickly explain why, if you try u-substitution, you'll end up with the next term later. And when you go through the full u-substitution, if you substitute u as well, you'll end up with the integral of sine u over radical u, which also can't be solved. The same thing applies for the cosine term. Uh, if you do integration by parts or anything else, you'll still end up with terms such as sine x squared in your integral that would leave you with something that's impossible to solve. So we don't have elementary functions uh, that can be used to express this integral. So you'll have a hint here uh, as to what we actually do to solve it, being we use our polynomial power series expansion for it. Now I'm going to quickly explain this. Obviously, if you know this already, you can skip through to the part where I actually get to solving the integral. So we have sine u, uh, the general uh, series expansion being represented by u, equaling uh, u minus u cubed over 3 factorial plus u to the fifth over 5 factorial, and so on. To explain how we get there, uh, we use the Taylor series expansion around the point zero. So what do I mean by this? This is basically the special case of Taylor series that are known as Maclaurin series. Uh, every Taylor series expansion and I'll write it off on this corner here, so uh, every Taylor polynomial denoted by P of X can be a, um, a approximation of any function. And what we have is uh, the expansion. First, we take the function at the point where in Maclaurin series it would be zero, plus then we have the derivative of that at that point times that uh, at that point, multiplied by, uh, first you'll have x minus that point. Remember, this is all with respect to that point. Times 1, uh, divided by 1 factorial, which is just 1. And then, after that, uh, I'm not going to write the rex term because I'm running out of space. You'll have the second derivative times this to the second power over 2 factorial, so on and so forth. So as you can see here, this is exactly what we did. The first term was sine 0, since we're taking this around 0, so that's just 0. We add that to the derivative of sine, which is cosine of 0, which is 1, multiplied by u. We add that to the derivative of cosine at 0, which is negative sine 0, at 0. Then we add that to the deriv derivative of negative sine, which is negative cosine of 0, which is negative 1. We multiply that by the next term, which is u cubed over 3 factorial. Obviously, I'm not going to write out u minus 0, that's just u. And this is what makes this a special case of the Taylor series expansion. And that we get this gen, it's a summation from n equals 0 to infinity of this general term. Negative 1 to the n, because it's an alternating series, meaning it goes from negative to positive to negative to positive, so on and so forth. u to the 2n plus 1, since we skip over the even powers. Remember, sine is an odd function, divided by that same power. Now, uh, it's the same for cosine. Cosine is an even function. This is an easy way to remember, by the way. So we only have our even uh, powers. Now, knowing that this is the general series expansion for sine, what we can do is rewrite uh, this with sine of x squared. So I'm going to try and uh, quickly write out this series expansion. When we have sine of x squared, all we do is substitute this u for x squared. So we still have our summation from n equals 0 to infinity. However, oh, I'm sorry if I'm writing this slowly, but we still have our summation from n equals 0 to infinity. These constants remain the same. So you have negative 1 to the n power uh, because it's still an alternating series. But you have now x squared. So we substitute u for x squared, and the power 2 is multiplied by this power. So what we get is 4n plus 2. Uh, since we're distributing the 2 into that expression 2n plus 1, and we divide that by 2n plus 1 factorial, since obviously this isn't changing because there's no u term to be substituted for x. Um... And now, the integral is actually pretty simple, so we want to take the integral of this. So, let's set up this integral. 
we have, uh, we can substitute, whoops, alright, we're close enough to summation sign. <laughs> Uh, we can substitute our sine x squared in our initial problem with the summation from, uh, with an infinite sum from n equals 0 to infinity, uh, of what we had here, which is negative 1 to the n, x to the 4n plus 2, over 2n plus 1 factorial. Now, uh, this integral is actually very simple to solve because a lot of these terms are constants. So we have 2n plus 1 factorial in the denominator. We can take out the summation sign, the negative 1, and the 1 over 2n plus 1 factorial because they're all constants. And what we're left with is just x to the 4n plus 2. Now we're going to denote our final answer by the function s of uh, x. Now, when we apply the power rule for integrals to this, we're going to raise this by 1 and divide it by that new exponent. When we raise it by 1, we get 4n plus 3 divided by 4n plus 3. Because remember, the power rule, if we integrate, for example, x uh, dx, we get, I should have a dx term here, uh, we just get 1 half x squared since we raise the power by 1 and divide it by that new exponent. So, Knowing that, we get that our final answer, or the Fresnel integral for sine x squared, is the summation from n, that's a much better summation sign, uh, n equals 0 to infinity, uh, and then we get, it's still an alternating series of course, so negative 1 to the n, and then we have the fraction of x to the 4, n plus 3, all over 2n plus 1 factorial. And this process is very, very similar to our cosine x squared, and so uh, we'll apply the same, uh, same process here. So, we want to take the integral uh, or first we want to substitute x squared for our cosine u term. So what we get is that we have cosine uh, x squared is now equal to, and we substitute just like we did before, our uh, n equals 0 to infinity. It's still an alternating series, so we have negative 1, sorry, to the n. Uh, and then we have u now to the 4n all over 2n factorial. Now, uh, let's do that. Okay. So, now when we take the integral of this, uh, I'm going to show you, unlike I did before, all the constants factored out, so maybe that might be a bit clearer this time if you didn't get it before. So, before I write the integral, let's factor out all these constants. We have the summation from n equals 0 to infinity. Uh, obviously, the summation sign is a, is a function, not a constant, so... Uh, but it's just easier to visualize when we take it out. So we have negative 1 to the n, and then we have 1 over 2n factorial. Now, I noticed I made a mistake here. Uh, this should be an x now to the 4n, so let's just fix that really quickly. Uh, that's my mistake. I keep making mistakes like this. So, I'm sorry if that confused anyone, but hopefully it's clearer now. Uh, and then we have the integral of x to the 4n dx. And obviously, when we integrate this, we're going to raise it. Uh, to a power that's 1 greater than this, which would be 4n plus 1, and we divide it by that 4n plus 1. So we get that this function, we'll define it, uh, we'll no denote it by c of x, is now equal to uh, the summation from n equals 0 to infinity 
then we have, it's still an alternating series, so negative 1 to the n. Uh, and then we get x to the 4n plus 1, since this is our term after integration. And then we divide it by, remember the 2n stays there, 2n factorial. And we divide it now by our new power, 4n plus 1. Now, of course, my mistake over here, uh, I'm sorry for anyone who missed this before. Uh, I forgot to add our new exponent down in the denominator after using the integral power rule. So we have 4n plus 3 down here as well. And so this is the answer to the integral of sine x squared and the integral of cosine squared dx. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any ideas for topics, leave them down below. Remember to follow me on SoundCloud, subscribe, and give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Uh, um, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.